Hello class, today I'm going to show you a little bit details about submodeling and how it works and how we can take advantage of this method for complex geometries which we need more uh, accurate results. Okay, so I found this paper about uh, submodeling which is talking about the different uh, steps and how they do it but the main part i wanted to show you is the, the basic idea of submodeling imagine this is a complex geometry first you start simulation of this geometry with coarse mesh and then you identify wh what are the area of interest for us the stress concentration area so for example for this case you can see this area is very important and the rest we don't have any problem if you want to make sure this maximum stress uh, is going to reach the uh, fatigue stress or yield stress uh, you need to refine the mesh this area or for the whole geometry sub modeling is going to help us to cut the, this piece which is the uh, the area of interest for us and investigate that separate piece by refining mesh and uh, um, and making sure the, the value of the stress or displacement we're getting for the area of interest is accurate enough. Of course there are some limitations uh, you should be away from the boundaries usually this uh, if you are too close to the boundaries force or uh, fixed boundaries uh, this method is not going to be uh, accurate you you can always compare your result from the sub modeling with your main uh, geometry and model but anyway if you had a, a complex geometry and uh, you want to refine your mesh make sure your results they are mesh independent sub modeling would be a good idea okay let's uh, show you what i've done for the simulation uh, let first i open the status static structural analysis and i draw a very simple geometry it's a bracket l-shaped uh, model to uh, investigate uh, this uh, sub modeling uh, method okay let's wait to open this space claim to show you the geometry okay this is our geometry l-shaped uh, bracket and what i've done uh, i'm going to fix this part and uh, apply force up to this surface because um, uh, with this arrangement my stress concentration is going to be at this edge and I can investigate and uh, this sub -modeling. so basically I'm planning to have a, a stress concentration at this area as you can see I intentionally put fillet this corner because I don't want to have stress singularity and uh, otherwise my uh, mesh independence test won't work so i put a fillet so i expect when i refine mesh for this area it is going to reach uh, a, a constant or reach to a level of stress and it's not going to uh, just rise okay this is our geometry let me go back and open the model Okay, our model is here. Uh, let's see where I put the fixed support. Fixed support is at top. Force here, 200 uh, Newton force there. So definitely we are going to have uh, stress concentration here. Uh, let me see. For the mesh, I just randomly selected uh, this mesh arrangement. It's not bad and uh, actually it's pretty good. Uh, but of course I want to have a really really accurate area for the stress concentration so let's where is the stress concentration as you can see 
uh, we have uh, high uh, stress here it's about 1.04 times 10 power 8 Pascal 7 Pascal so now uh, we have everything and I solved this geometry with coarse mesh and I know the range or the ballpark figure of this maximum stress now let's cut this piece and have only uh, this area the area close to the corner and investigate that as a submodel so let's close this to do submodeling you need to create another static um, structure and connect the solution of this course model to the setup of the new one so basically the displacement results from the original model is going to be transferred to the new submodel information how about the geometry as I said you can cut the geometry and have just the area at the close to the corner so let me show you uh, the geometry okay as you can see this schematic picture this is our air shape bracket and i am going to cut this piece the red area and investigate this small piece cut it from the main geometry so if we go back to our new geometry, it is going to be a very small piece from the original geometry. Okay. So, as you can see, we connect the solution to the setup. The model is ready. Uh, the, and let's open the model. Because of this connection, we are going to have a new option in our uh, design tree okay now we have our model here and uh, you can assign the uh, material you know about the geometry we are going to work on the mesh and then you can see we have an another uh, a new option here which is a sub modeling option so First of all, we are going to mesh it. I'm going to uh, use body sizing, but of course uh, you can use any other uh, meshing techniques. And uh, I made it this uh, element size as a parameter because later uh, we are going to uh, do mesh and dependency tests and define this mesh size to uh, investigate the, the results of the stress we are getting for the stress concentration. So, uh, for the uh, sub-modeling, you need to right-click, insert, and identify this cut boundary uh, constraint. What, what are the uh, cut boundary constraints? This black line area are the cut line boundaries which we need to tell ANSYS this is the area I the surfaces I cut from the main uh, geometry so ANSYS is going to identify these surfaces which I'm showing here and put the displacement from the rough ca our calculation on these surfaces and then continue calculation for the stress uh, concentration uh, so you need to right click, insert, cut boundary, and let me select and select these surfaces. So it's going to be this area, this area, upper area, and front area. So let me delete because I already did it. After you apply it, ANSYS is going to automatically transfer all the displacement data to this uh, 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 surfaces. So as you can see, I selected this surface, back, bottom, and this front because it is 
we cut this from this area. So this, 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 and this. So now we have all the information regarding displacement from the uh, uh, coarse mesh. And now we can apply all the calculations, refine the mesh, and uh, get the much more accurate result for this stress uh, concentration or uh, the area of interest. Again, uh, I selected uh, the maximum stress as a parameter P here uh, to investigate the uh, mesh independence test. Okay. Let's go back. So now we have a parameter. So we go to the parameters and I included many different mesh uh, size element size here from coarse to re very refined. And uh, you can see they are very uh, fine mesh like a 10 times, 30 times uh, smaller than the original investigation. As you can see, gradually, when we have a coarse mesh, the value is very uh, 8.6 times 10 powers uh, uh, 6. But from the um, coarse calculation, we know it was about 1.4 times 10 power 7 Pascal. So when we uh, improve the mesh and refine mesh, gradually we reach that area. But still, uh, uh, we can see by refining further, we are reaching to the value around 1.09 or 8. Yeah, close to the uh, point. 1.09 times 10 power 7 is going to be uh, uh, Pascal is going to be our final answer and stays there to show you the mesh independency test for this case I draw the uh, graph for this case and as you can see uh, when it's coarse the value is a bit lower gradually when we getting finer and finer mesh uh, we reaching to that 1.09 uh, or 10.9 megapascal uh, maximum stress which shows our results uh, they are independent of the uh, mesh okay so remember it's not just about doing this method you need to make sure uh, your uh, results are accurate you all you must always compare your uh, subdomain results with the result of the main uh, model and uh, there shouldn't be huge difference there if there are huge difference something wrong and uh, you shouldn't uh, use this method or if uh, the area of interest is too close to the boundaries if they are too close you can't use this uh, submodeling method okay thank you